Hi, welcome to Everything About Web. My name is Jamie Cavanaugh, and this is the two column CSS layout part two. So here's where we left off, and uh, if we take a look at this um, in the browser, we're going to see it's not, um, it doesn't look the way that we want it to, but we have been successful at creating the two column structure and putting all of our content. Um, into the page. So um, let's go ahead and um, continue our work. So what we want to do here is we now want to work on the presentation which is basically creating the styling in CSS. So I know um, what the positioning needs to be for the different elements by looking at my Photoshop document. So for instance for my logo I'm going to start there. I'm going to go in and um, edit that um, div by doing a couple things. I want to float everything to the left and then I know that I've got um, 60 pixels pad of padding on both the top and the left of my logo. And again I can I know that because I can look at my Photoshop document and see that my logo is 60 pixels from the top and 60 pixels from the left. So now with my navigation, I want to go in and, and um, float that to the right. So I'm going to float it to the right. And I am also going to um, add some padding on the top. And I also want to define what the width of my navigation is. And again, I know from the Photoshop document that the width is 335 pixels. And that my navigation actually um, starts at 85 pixels from the top. Okay, so we have you know an issue here because our navigation is still vertical and um, now we need to add some CSS so that our navigation will be horizontal and, and also so it's styled the way that we want it. Now in the one column CSS layout, we um, when we were adding style to our um, navigation, we were actually doing it to the UL tag, the unordered list tag, but in this case we're actually going to um, be affecting the list tag itself. So I'm going to go up to um, Format, CSS Styles, New, and I'm going to select Compound, and what I want to do is I want to add styling to the list tag in my navigation div and it's going to be in my, um, I want to make sure that it's in um, my C the correct CSS style. And notice that I've selected my CSS style. I'm looking at it right here. So Dreamweaver is telling me in this case that it's going to define it right in this um, CSS file, which is great. If I had, if I was, um, had my source code, my HTML selected, I'd want to make sure that it's saving it to style.css. Okay, so here's where I'm going to do a couple different things. I'm going to pick my font family and my navigation is in Arial. The um, font size is 12 pixels and I know what the color needs to be and that color is 725D4C. And um, I also know that I've got some padding um, between all of my um, navigational buttons. So I'm going to do some padding also. And the padding is on the right, and there's 35 um, pixels approximately in between. So that is good and I need to do a couple other things. One is our, our navigation is um, vertical. We want it to be horizontal. So we can go up to the category called block and change display to inline. And what display inline is going to do is it's going to display it all in line so it'll actually be on one line. Um, 
And we have bullets in front of our list items and we do not want any bullets to appear. So under the list category, we're going to select none as our list style type. So once I do that, um, we're, go we're gonna see here that um, indeed the navigation is now horizontal. We've got spacing in between our um, sections, but we've got an issue because our um, navigation is linked and so we haven't defined the um, color or any of the properties for, um, for our links. So let's just go back to our source code. Sorry, to our CSS. So you guys can see here's the code that I just added. So font family, font size, the color, this display inline makes it so that the navigation will line up so that it will display horizontally. The padding creates the spacing in between the navigation sections. And then the list style type removes the bullets when I, select, when I um, actually select none. So now I need to define the state for my A link, my um, visited, and my hover. And that's what's going to style my CSS so I don't get that default blue and underline. So let me go back up to Format, CSS Styles. I'm going to, again, choose Compound. And this time I'm doing the list um, tag. I'm affecting the um, A element, which is any of the links, in the um, div called nav. Okay, And again, because I'm still in my CSS, it's going to define it right in right in that CSS file. So I'm going to say OK. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say text decoration none because I don't want an underline. And I want it to be the same color as my um, the, the text color that I defined a little bit earlier. So it's that 725D4C. And once I do that, we're going to see that um, this is great. Now my color is um, what I want it to be. It doesn't have the default blue in the underline. And now I can do the same thing for, um, I can define my visited and my hover. So let's go ahead and do that. First I'm going to do a little... Um, so uh, CSS styles new. I'm going to do a compound, nav, li, but now we're doing the a visited. Okay, and let's go ahead and do that. And um, visited means that once I click on it, you know, do I want it to change a different to a different color when I come back? And I actually don't, so I'm going to just define it as that same color. And then finally, um, my hover, which I do want it to have a different col color when I hover. So I'm going to go to CSS Styles, New. And I'm going to show you another way you can do this. Um, I can select hover. And then I could just put in the name of the div and the tag. And here we're going to define what's going to happen for our hover and make sure it's getting defined in that style.css. And for the hover, um, I, I want it to change to, to white. So I'm going to select that. So now if I preview in Firefox, we'll see that I've got my navigation. It's horizontal. I've got my hovers. So fantastic. I've got the um, header part of my page all set. But now I've got my two columns and I have my footer. So let's move to the left column, which um, we're calling content. And we've got these images. We have um, the headings. We have the paragraph. So the first thing I'm going to do is I've got this main content. Let's just take a 
take a look at our Photoshop document. So my my um, photo and all my text is in this main content. I want to define the width of it. So it's basically the same width as my image. And um, I know that my image is 550 pixels wide. So I'm going to go to my CSS and I'm going to select my div called main content and I'm going to go in there and I'm going to um, define my width for it as 550 and then if you notice my photo um, drops down and it also has some um, padding on the left and again by looking at my Photoshop document I know that that top um, is 40 pixels and that my um, photo is, sit is sitting 50 pixels from the left. So notice what happens. So now my photo and all my um, text now is, is um, starting 40 pixels from the top of this um, content div, this left side column, and 50 pixels from the left. Okay. So now I could um, go in and actually style my H1 tags and my um, paragraph tags. So let's go ahead and do that. So format, CSS styles, new, select compound. And again, I'm doing the main content h1 tags. So the heading tags for my main content. And again, because I'd be referring to my Photoshop document, I know that my font family is Verdana. The size is 30 pixels. Um, and I have my color. So uh, the color is 787D80. And the padding from the top. So I have a little bit of padding between where my um, H1 tag starts. And I've got a little padding on the bottom. So I'm going to put 15 pixels on top, 20 pixels on the bottom say OK and there we go we can see that our heading tags now are um, our headings are styled so what else do I have I've, I have paragraph tags right that I'm gonna need to style for this main content div so let's go ahead and do that so another compound Main, oops, content P for paragraph. It's being defined in my style.css. And what do I know about my paragraphs? I know that I'm again using Verdana as the font family. The size is 12 pixels. My line height is 18 pixels, so that's the letting in between my um, lines. The color is the same, um, so that's pound 787D80. And um, I need a little bit of padding on the bottom um, in between my paragraphs. So I'm going to go over to box and add 20 pixels um, onto the bottom of my paragraphs. Awesome, look at that. And now um, I've got this date. And if we go back to our code, we'll see that um, I have marked up this text using an H4 tag. So I'm going to have to define the H4 tag for my main content. So um, let's go ahead and do that. Format, CSS styles, new. Awesome, look at that. When you select it, it actually will put it in there for you, which is wonderful. Um, and for my H4, 
this is actually a different font family. It's Arial. So I'm going to select that. The size is different. It's 11 pixels. Notice they're all uppercase in the Photoshop document. So I'm going to use the text transform property to make it uppercase. Um, I have my color, which is a little different. So um, the color is 997. B63 and um, I've got padding on the top and the bottom that I'm going to set um, but I'm also going to uh, change my font weight and I'm going to select 100 for my font weight and I'll tell you why I'm, I'm doing that. Um, 100 is the, the lightest weight for the font and why I'm doing that is that by default in any kind of H1, H2, H3, 4, 5, or 6 tag um, by default just has a um, stronger stroke to it. It's in bold. So by defining it as font weight 100, it's going to reduce some of that heaviness. And I actually, even though I've specified it as a heading 4, I don't want it to be um, in bold. So then the last thing is I'm going to add that padding. So I'm going to add um, the padding of 5 on the um, top and bottom. And there we go. So if we um, look at this, look at that. So now we've got our left-hand column, which is fantastic. And now we can move on to our right-hand column. So um, let me just move this palette over here. So we have you know, some of the similar issues. Um, we're going to need to define for our sidebar, um, or I should say our main sidebar, what the width is, and then add the padding on the top and the left so that all of our content will um, have some padding. So I'm going to go over here and edit my main sidebar. And I'm going to give it a width. And the width is um, 339 pixels. And remember, it's 339, not 340, because of our one border, our one pixel border. So um, oops, sorry, that's actually not right. It's two, um, 249. And the reason it's um, 249 is we've got some, um, we just want it to be the same width as our photos. Okay, so remember that the entire um, sidebar is um, actually that 339, but we want it, our sidebar to only be the width of our um, photo. Remember we did that on the other side also. So 249, and then we're have, we have padding on the top of 40 and padding on the left of 50. And when we go ahead and apply that, you can see it. So I'm going to say, OK, that's what we want. Um, so that's great. We've got that going. Um, but now we need to do the same thing as we did on the other side, which is style our um, paragraph and our headings. So, this text right here is a paragraph and the let's connect is a um, heading. So let's go ahead and take care of that. So main, main sidebar paragraph is going to get the properties of, um, it's in Verdana. It's uh, 12 pixels. And the color is, and notice how you have to always put the pound sign. That is, um, you have to be sure to do that. So we've got the 787D80. We've got the line um, height of 18. And then we've got a pa some padding again. So padding on the bottom of 20 pixels. So very, um, very similar to what we had on the left hand side. Look at that, great. 
Fantastic. All right. So now let's do the Let's Connect, which um, we've marked that up so that we're using an H1 tag for that. So we're going to define main sidebar H1. So I'm going to just select it because you probably have noticed that when you do that and you go to Format CSS Styles New and select Compound that it puts that in there for you. And notice I actually um, misspoke. It, it isn't defined as an H1. The, le the Let's Connect is actually marked up as an H2 tag. So we're going to define um, Heading 2 H2 tag for our main sidebar. And the font that we've used here is, again, Verdana. Our font size is a little larger. It's 18 pixels. Our color is um, pound seven uh, a six four five three notice that in the Photoshop comp everything is uppercase so I'm going to select text transform uppercase okay and I also again want to reduce some of the font weight I don't want it to have quite as uh, much um, I want it to be a lighter weight so I'm going to select 100 instead of it being sort of um, bold and then um, I'm going to go to block because I want to add a little bit of letter spacing and again if you go to the Photoshop document you'll notice that in the design comp there is a bit of letter spacing so I'm going to do that in this block category under letter spacing, I'm going to choose one pixel of letter spacing. That's going to just um, give me a little bit of space between my letters, which um, just looks more aesthetically pleasing in this treatment. And then under box, I'm going to add some padding to the bottom of um, 10 pixels. And when I hit apply, notice how um, and okay, notice how my text has completely changed. So now we've got the let, Let's Connect um, styled completely different than really anything else on our page. So now I have my images and um, there's a couple things I'm going to do. One is I'm going to add some padding to the bottom of all of my images that are in this um, sidebar over here. So again, I'm going to go up to Format CSS styles new compound. Uh, let me delete this. I want to affect my image tag. So anything that's inserted um, as an image, any images, I am going to define a some padding on the bottom. So um, for my images in my main sidebar. I'm going to go to my category box and on the bottom I'm going to add 10 pixels on them and um, when I do that you'll notice that it just added a little bit of space in between which is great but I, I actually want a little bit more space between um, these images here and I'm actually going to do something <laughs> to show you how what one approach is and I have to admit it's not the best approach but um, it does demonstrate um, the use of, uh, of a break tag which um, is something that you might use. Um, in this case it's it's um, you know probably but it is definitely better to control these things with CSS but let me just show you one way you could add a little bit of space in between your um, images. So I'm just going to scroll over here. And here are our images. Here's our um, artwork one and our artwork two. If I go ahead and hit shift return, notice how Dreamweaver is adding these BR tags. These are line breaks. And what it does, if you look over in the design view as I'm doing it, is it's adding a little bit of space. Um, again, not not the best way to do it, but um, you will see people using um, break tags. So that's what I've done to add a little bit more space here. So I've added um, two BR break tags, 
between artwork one and two, and then I've added a couple below. And you can um, easily do a break tag by just hitting shift um, return. Or if you want to do it the long way, you can go up to insert HTML, special characters, and here's line break. But that's that's kind of a, um, a longer way of doing it. I, I like to use the shortcut of the shift return. So let's see where we're at. So there we go. Um, we're, we've done pretty well here. Um, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit more space. Um, so I'm going to add another break tag. Okay, and what you might have noticed is that um, there was a little bit of white showing, and that's common. Um, why that's happening is because the columns are really not actually the same height, and so you're, uh, you could see like a little bit of white. So this um, use of a border and a background color, it doesn't always work. If we only had her photo and we didn't have all of this other content in here, um, we'd have to approach building this a little bit differently. And I'm going to just throw out a term that um, would help you to create um, any kind of two column that would make it look as if the columns were always the same height. And you'll hear designers referring to that as using what's called a faux column, F-A-U-X. And I'm not covering um, how to build a faux column, but um, it's something good to know and something you will definitely run into um, as you continue to study um, HTML and CSS. So we're almost done. We just have the footer to go. So um, we've got a paragraph in our footer. It's just that copyright information. So let's go and just um, do our um, CSS for that. So uh, I think what I'll do is just highlight it and go up to Format, CSS Styles, Attach style. Oop, sorry. New. Put a compound. And we're defining our paragraph for our footer. Now, what we haven't done yet, I just noticed over in our HTML, is we haven't um, we have not marked up our text. We haven't added the paragraph text um, tag. So we're gonna have to do that afterwards. But let's go ahead and define our properties, we know our font family is Verdana, our size is 11 pixels, the color is pound F, uh, what is it, 9F, 5F5, and then we're, we have some padding on the top of 10 pixels, and we have some padding on the um, left of 50 pixels. Okay, so when we do that, um, we'll notice that we, you know, the styling um, isn't displaying, and the reason it isn't is we ha we don't have our paragraph tag, so we need to mark it up. So we're going to go to code and just put in our paragraph tag here. So we're just adding a paragraph tag around our copyright information that's in our um, footer. And as soon as we do that, we're going to see that um, indeed now our footer is styled. So now it's in our um, the correct font and font size and color. So let's look at where we're at because we made a lot of progress and um, look at that. So now we have, I'm going to just zoom, oops, oh, I didn't mean to do that, just reset that. Okay, so um, um, we can see that we've got our heading 
our header styled, we've got our left column, our right column, our footer. So we're pretty much set. The only thing that um, I would like to do is notice how my br the background color of my browser is white and so it's hard for me to sort of see this left hand column. I'm going to do one last thing um, which is to define a background color for my body. So I'm going to go back to my CSS styles window, select the body and edit it and I'm going to um, select a background color and I kind of want a really light gray so let me just mm, really really light maybe something like that and say okay hopefully it's not too light and there we go so now we've got um, a little bit of um, contrast so that we can see our white left hand column and we have created the layout for our page using CSS so um, this is called you know adding presentation the last step would be to create um, links so you'll notice that we've got a info at fifth floor gallery we've got an email link um, I would also link probably this fifth, fifth floor gallery. So let's just do that really quick. So opening up my property inspector, I'm just gonna go in here and add my link. Fifth floor gallery.com. So that's gonna open up the fifth floor gallery website. I'm going to uh, select target blank so it opens into a new page. And then I'm gonna just copy this. This needs to be an email link. So I'm gonna say mail to colon and I'm just gonna paste in the email. And I don't here I don't do anything with the target. I just leave it. And then same thing for this link down here. It's a email link, so I'm going to say mail to colon, just copy and paste that in there. And now I have the same issue as I had with the navigation in that I need to go in and define my um, a my visited and my hover for this because um, that's why it is defaulting and showing as um, this color. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'm basically defining my A link and my hover for my main content div. So let's just do this one last thing. So go up to CSS styles new compound so it is my main content, but it is my A link. And uh, let's say I want it to be a contrasting color. So I actually want it to be um, 997B63. I want it to be bold. And I don't want it to have an underline, so I'm going to select text decoration none. So for the link, I don't want an underline, but for the hover, I'm going to create an underline. So I'm going to say OK, and um, notice when we go to our design view that now my links have a different color. And the last thing I'm going to do is define the hover. So I'm going to go to compound hover and again this is for my main content and the only thing that I want to change with this is I, I do want it to have an underline so I'm under text decoration I'm going to check underline and in a second we're going to see what that does so now if I go ahead and preview it and save now we're going to see that our hovers have underlines. So um, that's just one other way of styling your um, links. So here they have a different color and are bold. And now with the hover, um, you just get the underline. 
So there you go. We have moved from just having the structure and all the content in the page to actually styling it and making it look just like our Photoshop document. So um, I hope you enjoyed this video. And thank you so much for watching Everything About Web. Please visit us at www.everythingaboutweb.com and also on YouTube and Twitter.